Shakespeare's As You Like It. Talk, can we talk about a little bit about that libretto and, and what you, the libretto meaning, you know, the story. Yes. How, how did you go about that? Well, um, I went about it with a lot of trepidation or a lot of worry because uh, Shakespeare's type of theater, the thrust stage, you know, you're not actually changing scenery, it's, it's a multi-purpose set. Um, that doesn't lend itself to grand opera that changes scenes in a grand way. And, and I didn't want to dispense with scene changes mm -hmm. uh, completely. I didn't want to utilize the, that type of theater. Uh, and then I also wanted to include the entire dramatic thread. And it was, it's quite a story. It's, it's, as You Like It has been done less as op opera than most of the other Shakespeare plays. And the reason is that it has four love stories that culminate in a quadruple wedding. And it's just impossible in, in music to follow four love stories. Even two is difficult. One of the difficulties of As You Like It for an opera is that there are already famous songs in it. Mm -hmm. And they are not integral to the drama the way an aria is in an opera. So how do you exclude Under the Greenwood Tree, or It Was a Lover in His Lass, or how do you include them and still have the, the real love duet, which would be um, where I have a love duet in it, where Rosalind, you know, it's the fake wooing of Orlando and Rosalind, uh, where he's pretending that she's Rosalind and she really is. That is more romantic than, than it was a lover in his last for opera mm -hmm. purposes. So uh, what I decided to do was I, I felt I had to first write a good under the greenwood tree and it was a lover in his last because if I couldn't do that, I'd be compared to all the great songs of the past John Dowland and other Christopher Morley, mm -hmm. their versions. Under the greenwood tree, who loves to lie with me and tune his merry note unto the songbird's throat. Come hither, come hither. Come hither, come hither. Shall he see? Shall he see? 